Welcome. In this video, we look at section 3.3, Compact Sets. And let me start with a couple quotes from the book. First, the central challenge in analysis is to exploit the power of the mathematical infinite via limits, series, derivatives, integrals, etc., without falling victim to erroneous logic or faulty intuition. We've seen it's pretty easy to use erroneous logic or faulty intuition when thinking about the infinite. Now, employing compact sets in a proof often has the effect of bringing a finite quality to the argument, thereby making it much more tractable. One of the reasons that we study sets a lot is because sets will form uh, domains of functions, and it turns out that if a function has a nice domain, then the function often has nice properties. And compact sets are some of the nicest sets that we can use as domains for our functions. Okay, so let's take a look at compact sets. Here's the definition. A set K, which is a set of real numbers, is compact if every sequence in K has a subsequence that converges to a limit that is also in K. This takes a little dissecting, so pause the video if you need to and look it over a couple times. The set K is compact if every sequence in K has a subsequence that converges to a limit that is also in K. So it's a little bit like a closed set in the idea that there are sequences that converge to points that are already in the set. In a sense, it contains its limit points. Here's an example. The, the interval from 3 to 5 that includes the endpoints, all real numbers from 3 to 5 inclusive, that is a compact set. And let's see why. Imagine that I take any sequence in the interval from 3 to 5. So what that means is that every term of the sequence is some number between 3 and 5 inclusive. Now, since that set from 3 to 5, since that's bounded, I know that the sequence has a convergent subsequence. Do you remember why that is? That's this bolzano weierstrass theorem. So there's some convergent subsequence a sub n sub k. Since that interval is closed, I know that the limit of the subsequence is also in that set. A set being closed means that it contains its limit points. So whatever the limit of that sequence is, that has to be in that set from 3 to 5. Thus, every sequence in the uh, interval from 3 to 5 has a subsequence that converges to a limit in that interval. Thus, the interval from 3 to 5 inclusive is compact. Let me ask a couple questions. By the definition, must every compact set be closed? So actually, take a second, pause, and see if you can answer this for yourself, and then start the video when you're ready to check your work. All right, and the answer is yes. And we'll see a formal proof coming soon. But the idea is that um, if I have any sequence whose uh, elements are in K, then that sequence itself I mean, if that sequence converges, that sequence itself is a, is a subsequence of itself, and so it must converge to a limit that's also in K. And we'll see a, a more formal proof in a few minutes. How about this one? See if you can do this. Give me an example of a closed set that is not compact. And once again, pause and try. Pause the video, look at the definition, and see if you can find a closed set that is not compact. All right. And here is an example, the infinite closed set that starts at 8 and contains every real number 8 and greater. Uh, why is this not compact? Well, I can make a sequence in this set. So how about the sequence uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, forever and ever and ever. So that is a sequence whose elements are all taken from the closed interval from 8 to infinity. But does this sequence have a convergent subsequence? No, it sure doesn't. And to be compact, every sequence has a subsequence that converges. But this sequence, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, da 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 da, forever and ever, that has no convergent subsequence. So this is not a compact set. Um, by the definition, must every compact set be bounded. You know, in this example I gave, that was an unbounded set. Well, it turns out the answer to this is yes. 
And again, we'll see a formal proof. But there's some big ideas. Closed and bounded. Every compact set is closed and it's bounded. In fact, let's take a look at those ideas just a little bit more closely. It turns out that this is a biconditional. The set K is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded. Now, that means that closed and bounded is an equivalent characterization of compactness. Uh, honestly, in the future, whenever you hear the word compact, you can just think closed and bounded. That's a pretty good way to think of what a compact set is. So here are some examples. Like we saw the, the closed interval from 3 to 5, that is a compact set, but uh, 3 to 5 open, that's not compact. So even though it's uh, bounded, it's not closed, so it's not compact. The set that contains just the two numbers, 8 and 9, it's closed, it's bounded, so it's compact. Oh, and just thinking about the definition a little bit, can I make a sequence of points taken from that set? Well, I can, but my sequence might look a little strange. Maybe a sequence from there looks like 8, 9, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9, 9. I don't know. Some kind of combinations of 8s and 9s. One of those has to go on forever, either the 8s or the 9s. So I could take a subsequence that consists of only 8s or only 9s, and that would be a subsequence that converges just because it's constant. But something that would be not compact, maybe for example, uh, 1 over n, where n is a natural number, what does that look like? That's uh, 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, 1 sixth, forever and ever and ever. But it's not compact because it's not closed. There's a limit point right at 0 that is not included in the set. If I take compact sets and I union them together with a few more compact sets, yeah, it's still closed. It's still bounded. This is like the example I gave earlier. What if I have just uh, isolated points? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, forever and ever. Well, the entire set is closed, but it's not bounded. And clearly there's the sequence 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, forever and ever that has no convergent subsequence. The Cantor set. So this is maybe the first weird example of a compact set. The Cantor set is a little bit hard to describe, but it's closed and it's bounded, so in fact it is compact. Also kind of weird, but in the not compact category, would be the set of all rational numbers from 0 to 1 inclusive. It's certainly bounded, and you might think at first that it's closed because it's the intersection with a closed set, but this is not a closed set, so it is not compact. All right, let's think about a proof for this statement. Why is it that compact is so if and only if it's closed and bounded? Well, let's first of all be careful to, and define bounded. We've actually not defined bounded yet. A set A in my set of real numbers is bounded if there is some m, a real number, so that the absolute value of a is less than m for all a in my set a. So I usually think of it this way. There's 0, I have some number negative m, and some number positive m. If all of the elements of my set a live between negative m and positive m, then that set is bounded. So the existence of such a large m guarantees that the set is bounded. So let's consider the proof from right to left. If it is closed and bounded, then the set is compact. In fact, consider the previous demonstration that we did showing that this set 3 to 5 was compact, and you can modify that pretty readily to show that any set that's closed and bounded is also compact. But the other direction maybe takes just a little bit more work. It's not bad, and we'll go through the details on the next slide. Here's the proof that if it's compact, then it is closed and bounded. Now we start off assuming that it's compact, so we need the definition. We're going to rely on having this definition here. We're assuming that the set is compact. First, let's prove that the set K is bounded. For contradiction, let's suppose the set is not bounded. So it's compact, but not bounded. Well, if it's not bounded, then there exists some uh, x1, so that the absolute value of x1 is greater than 1. So I think here's 0, maybe here's negative 1 and positive 1. There has to be some number x1 outside of negative 1 to positive 1. Right there, x1. 
And also, there exists some x2 in my set, so that the absolute value of x2 is greater than 2. Okay, so I'll go negative 2, positive 2, and maybe there's some x2 out here. And maybe there's, well, not just maybe, but there has to be some x3 in my set so that the absolute value of x3 is greater than 3. So I continue on, negative 3, positive 3. I get my x sub 3. And in general, for any n, I can find some element of my set k that is uh, in absolute value greater than the n. Now, since my set is compact, by, by definition, this sequence of elements that I've just created must have a convergent subsequence. So let's call that convergent subsequence x sub n sub k. But the elements in that convergent subsequence satisfy that they're getting larger and larger and larger. So that subsequence that I just found is unbounded. But here's where the contradiction comes about because if it's a convergent subsequence, then it has to be bounded. Every convergent sequence is bounded. So on the one hand, I know it's unbounded, but on the other hand, it converges, so it has to be bounded. All convergent sequences are bounded, and there's the contradiction that proves the result. So I assumed that k was not bounded. I found a contradiction. Thus, k is bounded. If it's compact, then it's bounded. Let's prove the next part. Assuming it's compact, let's show that the set is closed. Now, how do I actually do this? How do we show that a set is closed? Well, what I need to do is, let's get a sequence that converges, whose elements are taken from k, and show that the limit of that sequence is also in k. That's what it means for a set to be closed, that it contains its limit points. So, suppose there is a sequence taken with the elements from k, and suppose that this sequence converges to some uh, limit x. We claim that x is also in the set, in that compact set. Every subsequence of a convergent set must converge to x. I mean, this is my subsequence convergence theorem. If I have a, a sequence that converges to x, then every subsequence also converges to x. Oh, so in fact, let's recall, <laughs> what do I know about my, uh, my compact set? Every sequence has a subsequence that converges to a limit that is also in k. So if every subsequence of this uh, sequence is converging to x, the only thing I can conclude is that x must be in k. And that's what we needed to show that k was closed. So there we have it. That completes the proof. We've shown that uh, if k is compact, then it is bounded and closed. Nested compact sets. We can think of compact sets as generalizations of closed intervals. For example, this theorem shows us that uh, nested compact sets behave a lot like nested closed intervals. Do you remember the nested interval property? If I have nested closed intervals, then their intersection is non-empty. Well, the same thing holds true for compact sets. If I have nested compact sets, k1 contains k2, which contains k3, which contains k4, forever and ever, then the intersection of all those compact sets is non-empty. Let's see a proof for this. Now first, I will present you with the proof. It's pretty short, but I've put a few blanks in there. See if you can read through the proof and fill in the blanks and make sense of why this proof is so. All right, pause the video and give it a try. All right, I'll assume that you have given this an honest try. Let's take a look at the proof. So first, for each natural number, I can pick a point xn that is in set k sub n. So I can pick x1 that's in k1, x2 that's in k2, x3 that's in k3, and so on. Now, I've ended up creating an entire sequence of points. And the entire sequence, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, forever and ever, that entire sequence is contained in k1, right? Because k1 contains everything. k1 contains k2, which contains k3, on and on and on. So the entire sequence is contained in k1. And now, since I know that k1 is compact, there's a subsequence where x is that limit and the x is actually in k sub 1. Also, 
If I take that sequence, but now I start at x2 and continue on, the sequence starting with x sub 2, that's entirely contained in k2. So that same subsequence is part of that. Maybe I need to knock off the first term. But otherwise, I know that that uh, truncated subsequence has a limit x, and so x is also in k2. And I can start the sequence at the third point. And again, that subsequence, well, you know, maybe I need to knock off the first term or two, but eventually where it's going, that is also contained in k3. And we continue doing this. So x is actually in every compact set, k sub n. So consequently, x is in the intersection of all the compact sets. The last thing I want to talk about is really sort of a, a by-the-way remark. We won't use this, but I just wanted to point it out. Let k be a set of real numbers. The following are equivalent. k is compact. k is closed and bounded. This is what we have discussed in this video so far. There is a third equivalent statement. Every open cover for k has a finite subcover. And this seems a little bit strange. It is a little bit strange. In many texts, this is actually the definition for a compact set. And if you want to do analysis on sets more than just the real numbers, it does turn out that this third point is a good way of defining compactness. But for us in this course, since we're only dealing with analysis of the real number line, uh, the first two are sufficient for us. And just incidentally, what this means is an open cover for k, that's a collection of open sets whose union contains k. All right. If that's so, if I have a collection of perhaps infinitely many open sets and the union contains k, then it turns out that there exists a finite subcover. There's some finite subset of that set of open sets uh, where that finite subcover, that union also covers all of k. All right, you can look in the book for more details. Like I said, it's not actually really important for us for this course, but I just wanted to point it out in case you take another analysis course later on. There's a pretty good chance that this will be your definition for compactness. All right, we have completed 3.3 compact sets.